Argon check-in. Um, I don't know uh, if you guys have uh, followed up themes or just have kept up with messages on Slack, but um, basically yesterday, uh, sometime late afternoon, I noticed that um, Argon was not responsive, um, and you know, folks on Discord also noticed. Um, and uh, and so I, I filed an issue on the DevOps side just to add some alerting and monitoring so that we proactively uh, get notified like when when things are down in the Argon setup. Um, and then this morning uh, there was some quick uh, investigation happening between Charlie, Jay Wiley, and Ludo. Um, and so it turns out that this is actually a feature that um, uh, we, parts of it were not maybe fully tested, but basically if you remember, we had talked about um, setting in a predictable exit block height um, for the stacks node. So when it reaches a certain burn chain block height, the process exits. Uh, so that's what happened on Sunday afternoon. Um, so independent of, uh, uh, you know the restart procedure not working correctly. I think there was a little bit of a planning failure um, on our end where we should have chosen a block height that would not, you know, land on a Sunday afternoon, or like someone should have been watching for it explicitly. The other thing that at least I got a little bit confused about was when I had initially looked at that number, um, I thought I had assumed that that was like the stacks chain height, but then Ludo corrected me that it was actually the burn chain block height. Um, so. So anyways, that's what happened. So the stacks, the master node exited. Um, I don't know if the follower is also configured similarly, Ludo, but I think the follower also exited or stopped responding soon thereafter. Uh, and then on the Argon setup, um, the restart procedure is not wired up correctly. So if the master node exists for whatever reason, you know, everything does not restart automatically. And so that left the system um, in this kind of funky state that it is in right now. Um, so, so that's where I think we at least understand um, the root cause of what happened. The other issue that I had hit and also filed over the weekend was spinning up a new miner was uh, very, very slow. It was taking two plus hours for me to just download the burn chain blocks. Um, and so that seems to be also an issue with um, how the resources are set up on the Bitcoin D pod right now. So we're going to try giving it a little bit more resources in this next restart. Um, and see if that fixes um, that problem. Otherwise, if someone's spinning up a miner and the chain is already, you know, few thousand burn chain blocks uh, down, um, it's just a very frustrating experience for someone to bring up a new miner right now. Anything you want to add to that, Ludo? Uh, no, I think you can put it just good. Okay. Um, any comments? Questions, reactions from anyone else? Okay, so the plan is to do a, another chain reset um, right after this meeting. Um, so I guess like two questions for this group. Um, should we try to fix up like the restart procedure and you know still choose a block, block height at which we wanna terminate? If so, what should that block height be And today? I do want to make sure that we calculate exactly where it will land and make sure it's either during business hours for us or that someone is you know, accountable for actually watching the system at that time um, so it doesn't go unnoticed. Anyone has thoughts, opinions? No? Um, I think that it's still useful to do this exit. Yeah. Um, if we can get it to work appropriately. Um, okay. What about you, Ludo, Jude, if you have any opinions either way? I think that we should have a watchdog as well. Um, because if the, if the system is current as designed, system as designed will cause a, a chain reset to a certain block height is reached. But if something like Bitcoin, if the Bitcoin node, for example, isn't even advancing, then the system will never restart. Mm -hmm. So we should probably have an additional cron job that says like every 36 hours or something longer than the expected amount of time to reach that block height passes, then do a hard reset. I mean, wouldn't it, shouldn't we instead just do some monitoring around Bitcoin to just flag if the chain is not advancing instead of like doing a hard reset regardless? 
Yeah, I mean, we, we should be able to do this in Kibana, right? Like, we have logs, like event logs from the master node every time it processes a new firm chain block. So like, if those messages aren't coming through, we should be able to alert, right? Mm -hmm. um, um. So like, maybe we should come up with, um, yeah, we should just be tracking a list of, uh, events that we want to be alerted on. Like if there's no burn chain block for an hour or no burn chain block has been processed for an hour, like we should get an alert. Yeah, so I opened an issue in the DevOps repo. Um, if you guys have thoughts on additional monitoring, monitoring and alerting for Argon, feel free to add it into that issue. Okay. Anything else uh, specific to Argon before we just go through the board? All right. So on to our board. Um, let's uh, quickly talk through these two because I think they've both been in review for a while without a lot of progress. Um, Ludo, have you had? chance to like work on this at all like what's the next step on this one uh, so i have one uh, last case to cover it's when the mocknet is crashing after producing a bunch and bug but before uh, processing uh, the bunch and bug so uh, yeah i have this last case to 200 and then I should be able to uh, mark this pull request as ready for review. Okay. And and just sort of my curiosity, like how are you approaching this right now? Like is there sort of an abstraction in our code that essentially like says, you know, commit something to this before like updating in memory state so that we have like some crash safety or is it more like, you know, we're finding all of the various places in the code where something like this might happen and then making targeted changes like it's it feels more mm -hmm. ad hoc that way like do we have a, a, a an abstraction that is useful or it's just you know we're finding all of these places and making changes on a case, uh, by case? so I, I, I don't have any abstraction at this point I, I'm basically um, uh, putting some explicit panic in the code after every single step and trying to crash and recover from that. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Does anyone else have like thoughts or, or ideas on like whether this is like a good enough? It feels a little bit brittle like going forward. Like if we have, you know, additional code paths in the future, um, it feels like we might pretty easily like introduce new scenarios that are not covered and are harder to like detect going forward. Or, or do we think it's a, this is a reasonable approach for now? I think that um, this is something we should probably talk a bit more about in depth at the design meeting, um, because okay. if we're going to go forward with the uh, proposal of having of having a separate um, um, view management logic from storage, then that's a really good opportunity to address crash safety. Okay. Um, I will add it to as a tentative action or discussion topic for the next one. All right. Um, so do you think you'll have uh, this PR for like review, like today, tomorrow, like how far are you? Yeah, the goal is to uh, open something by the end of the day. Okay. And then uh, what about this one? 
and this is mostly refactor, right? Is this already merged? No, it's not merged. So I think that um, Jude wants to merge this in the work that he has on the minor stuff um, before, before merging this into master. Yep. And is that because you're anticipating, Jude, that there might be some changes we need to make to this PR that we will uncover as a result of the testing that you're doing? Yes. Okay. Um, all right. And then we have a, a bunch here that are. Um, Those are should all I put, now. Yeah. But is the PR actually ready for review? Because um, I don't know, you were, had been making a lot of changes until last week. Yeah, it's ready for review. Um, a lot of those changes, we're trying to get some tests to pass. And um, my neon miners, not the Docker image, but the ones with these modifications have been running successfully for the past four days with no problems. Okay. All right. Those are still in progress. All right. Um, so we, we discussed 1660 briefly on Friday, I guess. Uh, but I, I didn't walk, walk away with a clear conclusion. So is the conclusion that there's nothing wrong here and we don't need to investigate any further? So I, I, I thought about it. Um, and I, I'd like to suggest something on this one. Um, can we set up, um, a node on the side uh, with a miner, uh, which would be uh, behind the nut, and make sure that this mini setup uh, with two nodes, one under nut, one without nut, is fully working and there's no issue there. Like if we have control over the setup, then I think we, we can say that there's no bugs, but if that, yeah, uh, like. I agree with Ludo. I think we need to have at least one, one uh, natted miner as part of our, <clears throat> part of our infrastructure. Um, and is there like some, um, something that we can look at like V2 info and compare against these two nodes to just like programmatically like flag issues in the, their reported chain states? Um, so I think that the answer to that is yes, um, but also um, I'm hesitant to say that the NAT issue is at play here um, without knowing that the miner is never actually receiving the blocks from the other miners, right? Um, because when we looked on Friday morning, like the chain tip was not progressing at the exact rate, but like it had all of the blocks, like it had 95 or 98% of the blocks, which indicates a different problem, which is that like it didn't download the blocks fast enough to advance its chain tip to mine off of. Um, which is, yeah, that it's a different issue than the natting. So, so again, going back to kind of what should we, what should we do here? Like, what's the next step in terms of either investigating uh, this issue further? Uh, do we still have the chain state from the argon miner? I think we had captured the chain state before we did the reset on Thursday, right, Ludo? Um, so I, I did get, um, like, you, you want the chain state of the previous epoch, right, Aaron? Like the one that ended on Sunday? Yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so the one that ended on Sunday, like if we just have that stacks testnet directory. Okay. Um, we, we should check with DevOps, I'm not sure. Yeah. If we have access to that, it's basically a pretty straightforward query to 
figure out whether or not we have all the blocks. Okay. But like for this issue in particular, it seems like there isn't like an active bug here that we're investigating. Like we want to set up a natted miner to to make sure that you know we can watch out for these issues and or make sure that they the setup is working as expected, but there isn't like a, a known active issue that we are tracking. Is that is that a fair characterization? Yeah, I think that that's right. Like, w what we might want to do is like introduce some sort of heuristic for the miner to wait a little bit if it knows that someone else won the sortition. Um, like, it should maybe wait ten seconds or something and see if it gets a block before turning to mine. Got it. Um, okay, I'm going to close this out for now, um, and then let's follow up with the DevOps team on setting up a matted miner. Um, okay, this one has also been in the backlog for a while, Aaron. What's, yeah. what's a good next step on this one? Um, I would want to wait on this one until we have um, a clear plan about what we're what we're doing with our st state in general. Um, okay. So, so post yeah. Wednesday, hopefully. Post Wednesday, yeah. Okay. And then, since we're talking about this, uh, the plan is that you're you're putting together at least a sketch that we can discuss on Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Um. Same with 1463, like I think we've been kind of pushing it from um, sprint to sprint. Um, should I just mark it as maybe like help wanted or something and remove it from this milestone? Because I, I think either we should like decide on our own, like what is a good prioritization or like we should just wait for this issue to like bubble up uh, because otherwise it will forever be in this state where we we'll, we'll keep pushing it out from sprint to sprint. Yeah, um, I mean, I can take a look at this um, because otherwise most of the, like all of the proof of transfer work is sort of blocked on our Wednesday design meeting. And okay. so I will work on getting a document together and then I can also take this one. Okay, so, so should I send it to you? Yeah. And then we can figure out whether or not this is uh, actually an issue um, or um, something that'll go away with okay. or production builds. All right. Uh, similar feedback on this one. I think this we've been kind of punting this from sprint to sprint. Um, I do feel like uh, you know a. I personally feel like a greater need to have, you know, good monitoring, alerting, like visibility into our test nets. And, you know, we, we should start working our way towards it. So, so Ludo, like, is this something that you have time for? Can we kind of scope it down to maybe like start with something small that's, you know, fairly simple so that we, we don't have like this uh, pressure to like have like a very comprehensive monitoring at the get go. Like at the very least, if there is, you know, something configurable that can talk to our infrastructure and we start reporting some basic metrics um, and just like get that done and then we can add to it over time. Sure. Um, so one question about this though, uh, what approach uh, are we considering? Uh, like, are we going to implement a, um, a pollen point or are we going to push? I was assuming that there is some, you know, Rust library for pushing to Prometheus that we can just plug in. We can either pull or, or push. Yeah. So. Um, and that's interesting. I, Maybe the DevOps team has a perspective on what, what they prefer. Yeah, I think the, usually Prometheus integrations are pull. It's right? pull. Yeah. 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 Like it sponsors oh, really? server. I, Oh, interesting. I, I thought that usually would be push. Okay. So we want to pull? 
Uh, we can ask DevOps what they think. Um, okay. That's probably a good idea. Um, but I think in any case, like it should be compile flag enabled, sure. disabled. Yeah. And so, and if if we go with the poll approach, um, are we creating an extra endpoint on the existing server, or are we so. just creating a new server and? Um, I think it's an, oh, so I, I, I think what we would want to do is there's like a Rust Prometheus library yeah. Yeah. that spawns, that handles spawning a server and it like yeah. binds to a socket. I think we would want to do that rather okay. than try and implement sure. it in, in our Friend server. Yeah. yeah, okay, sounds good to me. All right, do you think you'll have time to work on this little the sprint? Sure, yeah. If DevOps doesn't have an opinion, I'd be in favor of a poll implementation just because it's it's useful for for uses beyond Prometheus. Yeah. That seems... um, okay, 1504. Um, yeah, I think last time we talked about this, let me see if we made an update, I guess not. Yeah, does anyone remember kind of what the last discussion on this one was? Uh, yes, it was, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think Ludo had, I think Ludo produced a document for this at some point, right? Oh, okay. Actually, you're right. Yeah, we did assign this to Ludo. Okay, Ludo. Is this is going to happen, this sprint? Do you need help? Um, uh, okay. Um, I don't know if it's going to happen this print, but I, I can definitely do some progress on, on, on this PR. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to move it to in progress. Um, all right. And this last one, I think we've also been punting this one. Uh, yeah, Jude, we should, we should make a call one way or the other, like either make it happen in this print or next print, but actually make it happen. Um, Every time we talk about it, it sounds like, you know, we should do it, but it's not super important. We should uh, revisit this at the design meeting because I think this is part of the crash consistency story here. Okay. Um, we'll make a call then. Like, we'll either rename it as part of some aspect of uh, state view management or we'll close it and reopen it as something else. Okay. Um, I'm just making a note in the design meeting doc. Okay. All right, let's see if there are any new issues that we should talk through. Um, I saw some discussion happen on this um, earlier today. I think I roughly understand what's going on here, but maybe Aaron, you can do a quick summary or Jude, if you want to do a quick summary since you also chimed in here. Sure. Um, so I think ultimately the, the feature being requested is pretty straightforward. Um, like we have this support for traits and you have to supply a trait argument when you use it in a function, um, but there's no method, like when you're actually using the trait, like you can invoke methods on it, but you can't determine what uh, contract is implementing that trait mm. from Clarity. Um, so there's tons of use cases for why you would want to do this. Like in an exchange contract, you would want to be able to do this because you're sort of like tracking which, which tokens the you're receiving, things like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so that's basically the feature. Uh, it has to be implemented at the clarity level. Like you couldn't really have a library that does this. So. Yeah. Sorry. And how how um, how easy it is to like make changes to add this feature. Like, does it touch a ton of the code base? Is it like fairly contained? So if, if you scroll down, there's actually in my last comment there's a link, <laughs> and oh. we just need to revert. The, like, yes. It was initially implemented. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you're saying it's pretty easy. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Okay. I think one of the, um, you know, either Pascal himself or one of the other community members might be up for uh, taking this on if you want to open it up, unless, you know, one of you want to do it. What do people feel? It'll be okay with, or like if it's just a simple reword. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that the like, the amount of work here is like, would probably be like 30 minutes if, if Ludo does it. Whereas if, if we're like gonna ask Pascal to do it, then I think yeah. there might be like much a much longer cycle there. I see. Okay. Not, yeah. All right, Ludo, so are you doing it? Sure. Do you yeah. remember why we reverted it in the first place? So does a comment um, I, I wanted to ask Karen of Klein, but um, yeah. so it does a comment on on this thing. Um, I'm not sure. Yeah, I um, think see any comments here. Yeah, uh, I think it's in the PR. In um, the PR? Yeah. yeah, I I maybe vaguely remember this. I think that like at at one iteration of the implementation, like just the trait itself returned the principle. Like if you just used the principle, it would evaluate to, or yeah. if you used the trait, it would evaluate to the principle, which would mean that that function wouldn't be necessary. Yeah. Um, but like at some point that changed, it's no longer the case. So I think that the function is now necessary again. Okay. Um, I might be wrong though. I don't know. Four months, five months ago, you know, I was thinking all sorts of things. <laughs> five months ago was feels like a, a whole decade has gone by. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, this is in review, right? And this came up on Discord, Aaron. Do you want to give people some more context? Oh yeah. Um, so the idea here is that like if you are using the Clarity JS SDK um, to test your contract, you want to test it with stacks balances. Um, in order to do that, you need to get an address with stacks balances. And in the normal invocations, like from the Clarity CLI, like your local environment and stuff like that, um, there was no way to specify like Genesis block allocations. Um, and that PR just does that. So uh, the changes only, I think the, the only changes are in the Clarity CLI um, module. So it's pretty straightforward. All right. Um, Jude, you want to talk about some of the issues that you found? I think this was maybe mid to late last week. Sure, I, I noticed this when I was testing uh, my neon miners out with my uh, PDP fixes. Right now, when a node um, discovers a new block, it will tell its neighbors that it has a new block available. Um, but this is going to happen very, a lot when the node is uh, processing its initial blocks. So the system should not, and, and moreover, all the neighbors that it talks to will already have the blocks anyway. So when a node is doing its initial block download, this, this step of sending a blocks available is entirely redundant. Um, so it should be, we should have, a, we should have a way of detecting when we're doing our initial download and not sending them. It shouldn't take too long to fix. We already track whether or not we're in the initial block download state or not. It's just a matter of sending, uh, make, making sure blocks available messages sent for this purposes are only done at the right time. Um, since you're just finishing up um, or just finished up like a bunch of work around the, the P2P code, like should we batch up like a whole bunch of these issues and, and tackle them separately because um, you, some of the other issues that I think are on your plate right now are on the, uh, you know, the RPC endpoints that are on, are on mining. Uh, yeah. Should we wait for those to get done before taking these on? Of 1661 isn't a show stopping problem. It's more of an annoyance. So we can, uh, that can wait until after the mining stuff is done. Cause I'm anxious to get the mining stuff done before we uh, um, have the design meeting if possible. All right, 1659. Hmm. 
So would 1663 supersede this? Um, sort of. I mean, I, it, it might be related. Um, I think that this is just, this is a non starter, basically. Okay. Like the ability to store traits in variables introduces like arbitrary dynamic dispatch into the system. So should I just mark it as one fix and close it? Yeah. Um, the absence of doing this is a feature. Yes. All right. And do you want to put in like a final comment before we close yeah. it out? I'll drop a comment in there. And then... Okay. All right. 1658, Jude. That's in review. Are there any others in here that are also part of whatever? Yep, those two are also in review now. Do I get to claim bug bounties on these? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm, I'm okay just closing this one out unless someone feels strongly. Actually, I didn't even know this, but um, Matt's comment here, does, does every, did everyone know this? That with every push, we're actually producing build artifacts? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, should, we, should, we should publicize this a little bit more. I think- They didn't get there accidentally. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will make a lot of people very happy to know that yeah. they can just download pre-compiled binaries. I think a yeah. lot of people have asked for it in Discord and, and uh, I, I I did not realize this, this was already in place. So now I can just point people to, to these build artifacts. Yeah, the um, the thing that would be nice to add automation around is uh, uh, getting these subsequently included automatically in the Clarity JS um, NPM build. Like currently, that's like a whole separate, very manual process. Come on. Zen has autocomplete is busted. Okay, I will, I will put a comment on it on GitHub. All right, what about 1641? We briefly talked about it last week. Like, how are yeah, we yeah. thinking of prioritization for this one? I, I think there's consensus that we're going to do it. Um, I think it's just a matter of assigning it to a sprint. Okay. I feel like we probably have a lot going on this sprint, so. Yeah. So can I mark it for next one? Sure. Yeah. For now. I'm happy to take it. Okay. And then same here. We talked about it last time and think is there consensus this is something that we should tackle at some point we just don't know when or is this like a must do before you know one of the phases i think this can be pushed arbitrarily far back um but i do think that we will need to spend it i, I think it's also something that we can easily outsource like the stacks foundation could probably have a grant open for this uh because this is kind of a heavy algorithms question when you get when you get down to it um, and it's also pretty self-contained. Like, is there like what what kinds of guarantees can we make about packing blocks with transactions that don't conflict and that maximize to some degree of approximation the the fees that a miner gets? I also expect that miners, just in their own rational self-interest, will come up with better and better block filling strategies. Yeah. Um, what about this one, Ludo? Is John actively working on this? Should I just check in with John directly when he has an Actually, let me just follow up with him. I can ping him separately. Unless you know offhand, Ludo, if he's working on it. No, okay. I can ping him. 
All right, I think pretty much everything else we've discussed multiple times before, so I'm, I'm okay skipping the rest unless someone wants to bring up a specific issue that we should revisit. Yeah. All right, um, any other topics? Otherwise we can end early, get 20 minutes back. Okay, all right, thanks everyone. Cool.